Ladies and gentlemen, gather round, grab your ale, and settle in for the tale of Eric Stonemason. A dwarf with a smile brighter than a dragon's hoard, and a backstory that'll leave you chuckling in your armor. Picture it. A bustling dwarven village, where the sound of chisels and hammers is the lullaby of baby dwarves. Eric Stonemason, the eighth and final son of Ansel Stonemason, was meant to be named Elric. But alas, his father's handwriting was about as reliable as a goblin's promise, and thus, Eric, he became. Ansel, a busy dwarf with a penchant for perfection in stone, but not in spelling, shrugged off the error. Close enough, he muttered, and the name stuck. Young Eric was a joy to behold, always sporting a grin that could melt mithril. His father and seven brothers were perpetually engaged in hammering away at stone, leaving little Eric to his own devices. Not one to be left out, Eric would follow them to the worksite, watching intently as they carved and shaped stone with skillful hands. Despite his keen observation and budding talent, Ansel saw his youngest as a bit of a layabout. Every time he glanced over, there was Eric, seemingly lounging and daydreaming, one fateful day after catching Eric loafing, which really meant taking a well-deserved break after an intense session of stone carving, Ansel decided that perhaps the boy was better suited to a life of piety. And so, with a swift decision and little consultation, Eric was packed off to a temple to train as a cleric. After all, if he was going to be lazy, he might as well do it somewhere holy. Eric, ever the agreeable dwarf, went along with his father's plan without a fuss, his signature smile never wavering. Arriving at the temple, he was greeted with indifference by the other clerics, who were too busy with their scrolls and rituals to pay much attention to the newcomer. Days at the temple were serene, punctuated by Eric's frequent naps. He would find cozy corners to doze off in, always waking up with that infectious grin. The other clerics, noticing his daytime snoozes, quickly labeled him as lazy. But what they didn't know was that Eric's nights were a whirlwind of activity. Unable to sleep from excitement, he would sneak out to nearby villages and take in the sights, mostly rickety wooden structures that looked like they'd been put together by tipsy kobolds. With a sigh, he'd roll up his sleeves and get to work, replacing them with sturdy stone structures, one stone at a time. The villagers woke up to find their homes transformed, believing it was the work of a benevolent deity. The clerics, on the other hand, were left scratching their heads, wondering which deity had taken up night shifts as a stonemason. Meanwhile, Eric would quietly slip back into the temple, catching a few hours of sleep before the cleric started their morning prayers. Eric's favorite part of temple life was the library. Oh, the library! It was a treasure trove of knowledge, filled with ancient scrolls that contained wisdom on healing, divine magic, and the occasional recipe for dwarven ale. Eric would spend hours poring over these scrolls, learning everything he could about the healing arts. He particularly enjoyed the scrolls on herbal remedies and how to mend broken bones, a skill that would later come in handy. Despite his nocturnal activities, Eric maintained a sunny disposition during the day. He would greet the clerics with a cheerful good morning and a smile that could outshine a paladin's holy sword. The clerics, unused to such enthusiasm, were baffled. They often found him napping in the gardens, sprawled out under a tree with a contented look on his face. To them it was a sign of laziness. To Eric it was just a power nap. As the years passed, the clerics grew increasingly frustrated with Eric's apparent lack of initiative during the day. Finally, in a display of polite exasperation, they asked him to leave. Eric, ever the optimist, accepted their request with his trademark smile, 
and set off to bring his unique blend of stonemasonry and healing to the wider world. Now Eric roams from village to village, his reputation preceding him. Wherever he goes, he leaves behind marvels of stonework, from majestic houses to robust barns. Each piece bears his initials, ESM, a subtle mark of his craftsmanship. But Eric's talents don't stop at stone. He's also a skilled healer, tending to the sick and injured with a gentle touch and a reassuring smile. He never asks for gold or riches in return, only a warm meal and a place to rest his head. The villagers, grateful for his work, welcome him with open arms, marveling at the dwarf who turns their wooden huts into stone fortresses overnight. Eric's travels took him far and wide, from bustling cities to remote hamlets. In each place he would quietly assess the buildings, offering his stonemasonry services with a cheerful, just a little touch-up, no big deal. His handiwork left locals in awe. Structures that once seemed on the verge of collapse were suddenly the sturdiest in town, often prompting impromptu celebrations and feasts in his honor. One day, back in his home village, fate took a turn. Ansel Stonemason, while working on a stone ceiling, found himself buried under a heap of rubble. Severely injured, he was bedridden for weeks, his condition worsening. Just as hope seemed lost, Ansel awoke one morning to feel a soothing warmth spread through his body. His bones mended, his muscles healed, and as he opened his eyes, there was Eric smiling down at him. Hello, father, Eric said warmly. For the first time, Ansel saw his son not as the lazy dwarf he had once thought, but as a skilled and compassionate cleric. The stonemason family rejoiced throwing a feast that would be remembered for generations. Eric, ever the wanderer, bid his family farewell and set out once more, continuing his dual calling as a cleric and a master stonemason. Eric's impact on the villages he visited was profound. People marveled at his ability to build stone structures that were not only beautiful, but also incredibly durable. His healing skills were equally impressive, and he quickly earned a reputation as a miracle worker. Tales of his exploits spread, and soon people were seeking him out, hoping for a bit of his magic in their lives. Oh, and so, dear adventurers, if you ever find yourself in need of a masterful stonemason, or a healer with a heart of gold, look for the mark of M. And remember, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Dungeon Master's Bag of Holding for more tales of heroism and hilarity.